Live from Los Angeles, it's theCUBE. Covering Open Source Summit North America 2017. Brought to you by the Linux Foundation and Red Hat. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live here in Los Angeles is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Linux Foundation's Open Source Summit North America. I'm John Furrier, your host, with my co-host Stu Miniman. Our next guest is Chris Anizek, who's the COO, Chief Operating Officer of the CNCF, the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, mm -hmm. formerly KubeCon, Cloud Native <laughs> Foundation, all rolled into a, the, the most popular Linux Foundation project right now. Very fashionable, Cloud Native, running on native clouds. Chris, welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. Awesome, it's been a while, it's great to, great to be back. So you are the Chief Operating Officer yep. of the hottest project, um, to me at least, in the foundation, yeah. not the most important because there's a lot of really important, everything's yeah. important. You don't pick a favorite child, but <laughs> if one's trending, the CNCF is certainly trending. Yeah. It's got the most sponsors, it's got the yeah. most participants. Um, there's so much action going on, mm -hmm. there's so much change and opportunity around Kubernetes, around containers, around yep. writing cloud native applications. Yep. You guys have really put together a nice foundation around that, nice group. Um, congratulations. Thank you. Take a step back and explain to the folks, <laughs> what the hell is the CNCF? We know what it is, so, we, we've been there president creation, but yeah. it's super important, <laughs> it's growing in relevance every yeah. day. Yep. Take a minute to explain. So, I mean, I mean uh, you know, CNCF is all about providing a neutral home for cloud native technology, and you know, it's been about uh, almost two years since our first board meeting, and the idea was, um, you know, there's a certain set of technology out there, you know, that are essentially uh, microservice space that like live in containers that are essentially orchestrated by some process, right? That's essentially what we mean when we say cloud native, right? And CNCF was seeded with Kubernetes as its first project, and you know, as, as we've seen over the last couple of years, uh, Kubernetes has uh, grown, uh, you know, you know, quite well. They have a large community, uh, a diverse, con you know, contribution contributor base, and have done, um, you know, kind of extremely well. They're one of the, actually the fastest, you know, you know, highest velocity open source uh, projects out there. Maybe only, uh, you know, compared to the kernel, is maybe a little bit, a little bit faster. But it's, it's just great to kind of see it grow. And so, why is it, why is it so hot right now? What's the, what's the so catalyst? So I, I think, you know, if we kind of step back and we look at uh, trends in industry, right? It, more and more companies. Uh, are becoming you know software companies, right? Like you know folks like you know John Deere are building IoT platforms. You you need some type of infrastructure to run this stuff, right? Like and especially at scale. Yeah. You know, imagine sensors in every like you know tractor farm or like in every vehicle. Every like you're going to need serious infrastructure, and cloud native really is a way to scale. You know, um, you know those type of infrastructure needs, and so this is kind of I think why you're seeing a lot of you know interest being peaked in, in you know, CNCF related technology. A lot of yeah, prototypes too. Chris, you know, it's, it's interesting. I look back, you know, yeah. a year or two ago and it was like, oh, it was like, you know, the orchestration wars. It was like, you know, <laughs> Swarm versus Mesos. Yeah. And now oh. I look at it, you know, in the last year, it's yeah. like, wait, Mesos fully embracing it. Mesos yeah. Con, they're going to be talking about yeah, yeah, how yeah. Mesos is the best place to, you know, yeah. run Kubernetes on TCOS. Yeah. Container D, now part of. Uh, the container you know, wars, yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> the container wars, we're going to talk about OCI, you know. Amazon, Microsoft, of yeah. course, Google, you know, yeah. helped there at the beginning. We, is, is there anybody that's not on board the we, Kubernetes train at we, this point? I mean, we literally you have know? the top five cloud providers in the world, depending on, you know, what metrics you look like, part of CNCF. Um, you know, there's, there, there's some others out there that still aren't fully, you know, part of the family. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, if you stay tuned over the next, you know, uh, week or so, you may hear some announcements <laughs> coming from CNCF of other large uh, cloudy type companies uh, joining the family. Every week there's a new platinum sponsor. <laughs> you guys are getting a check, you know, every week it it's, seems like. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's great to see companies stepping up to the plate and actually uh, sustaining, uh, you know, open source foundations that are critical to the actual business. And, you know, I think that it, it's great to kind of see this, you know, that this involvement. So I, I, to me, I'm personally thrilled because, you know, otherwise we'd be in a situation where, you know, if if the top five cloud providers weren't in the you know in the world weren't part of CNCF, they may be trying to do their own you know initiative. So it's great that we have these companies at the table and all trying to kind of build, you know, find their own pathway to cloud native. Are right, you guys are hi hyper growth right now? Because and you're new too. You're still kind of you know, <laughs> less than two years old. Less I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So I want to put the little uh, Jim Zemlin test to you, <laughs> which is in this keynote today. You talk about this is this is the Big Ten event for the whole yeah. community of open source to come together. Yep. And again, you talk about 64 million uh, yep. libraries out there. Now he projected by 2026 400 million. It literally is a hockey stick growth. So yep. you got growth coming. So he talked about four things. In my yep. summary: yep. project health, yep. so healthiness, sustainability, mm -hmm. secure code, yep. training, new members. Yep. What's your strategy via those four things? 
keeping the CNCF healthy, you don't you know, eat too much and choke on all that growth. Yeah, so, yeah, so in terms of like projects, we have a very unique um, you know, governance structure in place when we design CNCF. So we kind of have this independent uh, technical operating committee. We kind of joke, joke, jovingly refer to them as a technical supreme court, but they are made up of people from uh, you know, uh, kind of luminaries in the container cloud native space. They're from competing companies too, but they try to really wear an independent hat and make sure that we're projects that we're accepting are high quality, um, are, are, are a good fit for the you know foundation. And so it's actually fairly hard to get a project in CNCF because it really requires the blessing of this of this TOC. So even though we have ten projects now in about two years, I think that's at a you know about a almost I'd say a, a project every two months, which is an okay okay pace. The other unique thing that you know that we're doing is we have different levels of projects. We have inception, incubation, and graduation. Right now we have no graduated projects you know, in CNCF. Believe it or not, Kubernetes has not graduated yet because um, there's, uh, they're still finalizing their, their, their governance for the project and they're almost there. Once they do that, they'll most likely graduate. They'll walk cap and gown the whole nine yards. Exactly, right? it'll be great. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. In December, we'll have this uh, the cap and gown uh, ceremony. But the other unique thing is like, we're, we're, we're not, uh, we, we do annual kind of reviews for some of our projects. Certain levels will be annually reviewed. And if they're no longer um, healthy or, or a good fit, we're, we're okay archiving them or telling, you know, you know, telling them like, you know, maybe you're not a good fit anymore for the foundation or like you're, you know, and so I, I think having, you know, you have to have a process in place where sometimes you do have to move things to the attic. You so know, you have a high bar on the, 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 the initial project. bar is extremely, extremely high, and and you know, I think over time we may have some, we may see some projects that get recycled or moved to an attic or maybe even maybe merged together. We'll see. So we're thinking about this already. So okay, um, security. Security, so we, uh, all, all projects in CNCF that graduate have to partake in the um, uh, core infrastructure's best practices badging program. So it's CII has this great effort that is basically helping to ensure projects meet a minimum level of best practices um, that make their uh, projects secure. You know, it doesn't give you like a full-blown guarantee, but these are good practices. So that you're leveraging pre-existing work, classic open source it, it, ethos. It, it, exactly, and, the, and they have like a set of domain experts completely focused on security, building out these practices, and you'll notice like Kubernetes recently merged in the CI best practices badge, so if you go to the README, you'll actually mm -hmm. see it, and then you'll click through, and you see all the like things that they've had to sign off and check on that they participate in, and so we're going, all of our projects are kind of going Training. through this process. Training, uh, yeah, we just recently uh, announced a couple things. One is we have a- good so, so far, you get an yeah. A plus. Yeah, yeah, so service. <laughs> We, so, uh, as of today, we've launched the uh, Certified Kubernetes uh, Administrator Program, or CKA, for, you know, for short. So, uh, we have folks that are getting uh, trained on and are having official stamps that they are, you know, certified Kubernetes uh, administrators. And to me, that's huge, given like how hot the space is. Yeah. Having some stamp of approval that they are really certified in the space is is, is huge. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we also offer free training through edX. So, we launched some uh, training courses earlier. And you know, to be honest, if you look at our member yeah. companies. Uh, lots of great folks out there providing you know, training material. So one of the keynotes that Christine Corbett was, Moran was talking about uh, in her keynote was more inclusion so there's no ruling class. Now you, I know you have a, you're early, you have a ruling yeah. class going on with your high bar, I get that. How are you getting new members in? What's the strategy? Who are the new members? How are you going to manage the perception possibly that a few people can control the swing votes of potentially big so, projects? So here's what's interesting is like people joining CNCF, like I mentioned before we have a TOC, right? So there's kind of this uh, separation of, I don't want to say church and state, but like, so the governing board, people who pay to join CNCF, uh, they pay to sustain our open source projects. And, and so essentially they help with, they pay for marketing, staff, events, and so on. They actually don't have technical influence over the projects. Like you don't have to be a member to, to have technical influence over our projects. People join CNCF because they want to, you know, have a say in the overall budget of how marketing and events mm -hmm. and stuff, and, and just overall support the organization. But on the technical side, there's this kind of firewall. There's an independent at TOC, they make the technical decisions. You can't really pay to join that at all. You have to actually be heavily participating in that community. How so does someone get in that, area, in that group? Uh, th Is there a it, code? Uh, they have to just be like a luminary. We have a kind of election process that happens every you know, two, three years, yeah, depending okay. on how things are structured, and it's independently elected by you know, the CNCF uh, member community, essentially, is the, is, the, is the simplest way I could kind of uh, <laughs> the, explain it. The other announcement, you talked about the kind of the individual certification, but the yep. KCSP certification Correct. programs, and another thing exactly. that maybe, maybe tell us a little bit yeah, about so that. Yeah, so we had a, a program set up, so it's a Kubernetes certified service provider, KCSP, that basically- Rolls right off the tongue. I know, right? Yeah, exactly, right, or Kerbal Space Program, but that's, I, I think of sometimes video games when, I, when we say that, but, but essentially, um, the program was put in place that 
you know, uh, a lot of end users out there and companies that are new to cloud native and, and new to Kubernetes essentially want to find a trusted set of partners that they could rely on services and, and other things. So we created KCPS, KCSP as a way to vet a certain set of companies that have a, uh, at least a minimum of three people that have passed you know, the Kubernetes uh, you know, certification exam that I talked about and are essentially participating upstream in some way, you know, actively in the Kubernetes community. So we got a couple handfuls of companies you know, that have launched, which, which is great. And so now, given that we're growing so fast, companies out there that are you know, early end users or exploring a space now have a trusted set of companies that they go look at. And we're hoping to grow that program uh, you know, over time too. So this is just phase one. All right, so Chris, the, the other thing that I wanted, wanted to make sure we talk about is the yeah. Open Container Initiative. So uh, I think it was originally OCP, uh, which of course Open was Container acronym, Project, uh, yeah, that it was we a bad had name. There, um, which when OCP was announced, it was like, okay, the Cold War of Docker versus yeah, yeah. CoreOS versus everybody else <laughs> trying to figure out you know, what that you know, yeah. container format was. We all shook hands. Yeah. Uh, I, I took a nice selfie with uh, you yeah. know, uh, Ben, who was CEO at the time, yeah, yeah. And, uh, Solid, uh, yeah. and, and everybody. Uh, so, uh, 1.0 is yep. out, so it yep. means containers fully mature, ready to be rolled out, right? Well, what, what does it mean? So, yeah, yeah I mean, it's funny, because like, I basically joined the Linux Foundation to help both start CNCF and OCI around the same time, right? And, and OCI was very narrowly scoped to only care about a small set of uh, container-specific issues. One around like, how do you actually like really like run containers? Start, stop, all that kind of life cycle bit, bit, you know, and, and how are kind of containers laid out in disk? We call that the image specification. So you have the runtime spec and the image spec. And those are just very limited core pieces. Like, their OCI was not opinionated, opinionated on networking or storage or anything. Those are all left to other, other initiatives. And so, after almost two years, we shipped 1.0, we got basically all the major container uh, players to agree that this is 1.0 and we're going to kind of build off from this. And so if you look at um, you know, uh, Docker with its Container D project, they're you know, fully adopting OCI, the Mesos community is, Cloud Foundry, even AWS announced uh, their container register supporting OCI. So like, we got the 1.0 out there, now we're going to see kind of uh, an abundance of people building tools and other things. You know, uh, I think you'll see more end users uh, out there exploring uh, containers. Like, uh, I've talked to a lot of companies that, that I can't necessarily name, but there's a lot of folks out there that may not dive into container technology until there is actually a mature you know, standard and they feel like this technology is just not going to you know, go away or they're going to get locked into some specific uh, platform. So uh, with 1.0 out the door, um, you'll see over the next six to 12 months, more tools being built. We're actually working to roll out a certification program, so you get that nice little like, you know, hey, this product is OCI certified and supports the spec, so you'll see that happen over the next. Uh, okay, so you've got, you've got the runtime spec and the image format spec. Yep, those are the two big oh, ones. Oh, 1.0, we ready to roll. What, yep. what, 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 what's, what's the what's roadmap look yeah, like? What's yeah, what's next? So, uh, you know, there are early discussions about, um, you know, what other mature areas are out there kind of in container land right now? There are some discussions around distribution. So having a standard API to basically uh, fetch and you know, push container images out there. If you look at it, each container registry uh, has basically a different set of APIs. And like, wouldn't it be nice if we could all kind of easily work together and have maybe one set you know, of way to kind of distribute these things. So there are some early discussions around potentially building out a distribution specification, but um, that's something that the technical community has to decide with an OCI to do. And so, over the next couple months, we're having some meetings. Uh, we're doing a bigger meeting at DockerCon Europe coming up in October to basically try to figure out what's, what's really next. So I think after we ship 1.0, a lot of people took a little bit of a breather, a break, and say like, congratulate themselves, take some vacation over the summer, and now we're going to get back in the full swing of things over the next couple months. So what's the big conversation here? Obviously at your event in Austin, let's yep. get a plug for that. The Cube will be live covering it as well. Yeah, I know, I'm excited. Um, what's the update? What's the conversation in the hallways? Any meetings? Give us some yeah, scoopage. So, so I know there's we're some, doing, we're doing a big it. announcement coming on Wednesday. There's yeah, some stuff so, happening. So, so, you know, uh, first coming Wednesday, so like I mentioned, we have 10 projects right now in CNCF. Uh, we have two projects currently out for vote. So uh, one of them is Envoy. Uh, there's a you know, company you probably heard of, Lyft, uh, you know, ride sharing company, but uh, Envoy essentially is their fancy uh, service mesh that powers the, the Lyft platform. And many other companies out there are, are, are actually taking advantage uh, of Envoy. Google's you know, playing around with it, integrating into the Istio project, which is, which is pretty powerful. But Envoy is currently, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, invited by the TOC for a formal vote. 
Um, the voting period uh, started last week, so we're collecting votes from the nine TOC members, mm -hmm. and uh, once that voting period is, hopefully we can announce uh, whether the project was accepted uh, or not. Uh, the other project uh, in the pipeline is uh, a project called Jaeger, uh, which is from Uber, um, you know, Nice to have Uber. Jägermeister. Yeah, Jägermeister, I mean, but like, you know, it's, it's nice to have a project from Uber, another project from Lyft, kind of, it's yeah, nice yeah. to see when And you, if you have too much of Jäger, you have to take the Lyft to get it, home, it, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly yeah. right. Pull so, it all together. So, you know, just, just, just like Envoy, uh, Jäger went, is, you know, went, got, was formally invited by the TOC, uh, it's, it's out for vote, and hopefully uh, we'll, 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 we'll count the vote soon and figure out if it gets accepted or not. Um, so, Jäger is focused on distributed tracing, so one problem in microservices land is like, once you kind of like refactor your application to kind of be microservices based, uh, actually tracing and figuring out what happens when things go wrong mm -hmm. is hard, and you need a really good set of distributed tracing tools, because otherwise it's like the worst murder mystery, you have like no idea <laughs> what's happened, so having solid distributed tracing solution like uh, Jaeger is, is great, because in CNCF we already have a project called Open Tracing, but that's just kind of like the spec of how you do things. Yeah. There's no full-blown client-server distributed for tracer. For are usually needed for manageability. Exactly, and that's what Jaeger provides, and, and I'm excited to kind of have these two projects under consideration in, in CNCF. Is really manageability the hottest thing going on right now in terms of conversations? <sighs> or is it more stability and getting graduation pro projects graduated? Yeah, we, 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 so like we're, our big focus is like we want to see projects graduate and kind of meet the minimum bar that the TO set up for graduated projects. Um, in other terms of kind of like other hot areas that are, that are under discussion in CNCF are uh, storage. Uh, so for example, we have a storage working group that's been working hard to kind of bring in all the vendors and different storage folks together. And there's some early work called the uh, container, uh, Thing, container storage interface, CSI, we call it CSI for short, and so you know there's another project in CNCF called CNI, uh, which basically tried to build a standard around how networking is done in container land. CSI is doing the same thing because, you know, it's no fun rewriting your storage drivers for all the different orchestration systems out there, and so why not get together and build out a standard that is used by Kubernetes, by Mesos, by Cloud Foundry, by Docker, and just have it so they all work across these things. And so that's what's happening. And that's still early days, but there's a lot of excitement in that. Okay, the event in Austin, what can people expect? KubeCon? You're literally going to have the biggest like, gathering of Kubernetes and cloud native talent. It's actually going to be one of our biggest events probably for the Linux Foundation at all. We're probably going to get you know, three to 4,000 people minimum out there, and I, I'm stoked. We're going to have some schedules not fully announced yet. I, I, yeah. you know, I, I do secretly know some of the keynotes potentially, but you know, just wait for that announcement. I promise you okay. it's going to be great. So. And one question I get, just I thought I'd bring up yep. since you're here on the hot seat. Um, a lot of people coming in with supporting you guys on mm -hmm. the governing side, not influence technical. How are you going to service them? How are you going to scale up? Do you have confidence that yep. you have the ability to execute against those sponsorships yep. to support the members? What's your plan? Can you share some insight? Yeah, hey, clarify you know, that. Hey, hey, you know, you know, uh, you know, uh, pressure makes diamonds, right? Like, you know, we we have <laughs> uh, we have a lot of people at the right table, and yeah. you know, our, you know, we are doing some hiring. So, like, uh, we have a couple spots open for developer advocacy, technical writing, uh, you know, additive things that help our project overall. We're also trying to hire a head of marketing. So, like, we 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 are in the process of expanding the organization. Uh, you feel comfortable? I, I, I feel comfortable, like it's, things are growing, things are moving at a fast clip, yeah. but like we've, we're, we're doing the best we can to hire, mm -hmm. and, and you know, don't be surprised if you see, you know, hear from, hear some announcements soon about some, some fun hires. Uh, well, it's been great for us covering, we've been present at creation, if you will, <laughs> this movement, which has been kind of cool, <laughs> because it's kind of a confluence of a couple things coming together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's just been really fun to watch, just the momentum from the cloud yeah. Arati early days, just yeah. 2009 time frame to now. Yeah. It's been a real nice ride and congratulations to the entire community. Yeah, thank you. Like for me it's just exciting to have all these like, you know, companies sitting together at the same table, like, you know, having Amazon join and then you know the other top, you know, the other yeah. top cloud providers all basically committing to saying we are in the cloud native. We may have yeah. different ways of getting there, but we're all committed working together at, at yeah. some level. So great I'm, I'm momentum, stoked. and you guys are doing some great work. Congratulations! Thank you very much. And you know it's working when I get phone calls. Hey, can you introduce me to uh, so and so? I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, no problem. Oh wow, they're big time now. Yeah. You guys are big time. So you know, congratulations. Thank you. I think phase one now. Like we have the right people. <laughs> Don't at the table. screw it up, <laughs> as they say. Right. It's on yours. Cool. Good job, Chris. All right. Chris Anisik, who's the COO of the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, the hottest area of Linux Foundation right now. A lot of action on cloud, cloud native developers where DevOps is meeting, a lot of progress in application development. Still, we're really only two years old. Yep. Get involved, more inclusion the better. Yep. It's theCUBE, CUBE coverage of CNCF will be in 
uh, Austin yep, in December. December 6th through 8th. December 6th through 8th. We'll be there live. More live coverage coming back in Los Angeles here for the Open Source Summit in North America after this short break.